Welcome everyone. My name is Robin Elander, Executive Director for Downtown Santa Barbara. Thank you so much for joining us again for the Downtown Business Spotlight, a collaboration between the Downtown Santa Barbara Organization and the Santa Barbara Independent. I am here with um, my co-host, uh, Matt Kepman, uh, Senior Editor at the Santa Barbara Independent. He's worked there since 99 and covered a wide range of topics. Um, today he co uh, focuses mostly on food and drink, um, and many special projects for the paper. He's also a contributing editor to Wine Enthusiast Mag Magazine, where he reviews more than 200 wines every month. And he recently released a book called Vines and Vision, The Winemakers of Santa Barbara County. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Matt, take it away. Thank you, Robin. You remind me, this, um, these hotels, once things are back to normal, would be a good place to uh, buy my book. So. I'll have to hit uh, you guys <laughs> up uh, when the time is right. But um, yes, I'm Matt Kevin, uh, senior editor at The Independent, been there for uh, over 20 years, um, have often covered um, tourism and some of the hotel uh, issues around town. Um, we've been doing this series uh, with downtown Santa Barbara since um, I looked it up. It was last September we started up um, and uh, I've been hosting a number of these, most of the food and drink ones, um, but now it's fun to, to talk about hotels with our three guests today. Um, we have Paul Bullock from the Eagle Inn, um, which is down in West Beach, really nice uh, property. I think it uh, dates back, the building dates back to the 20s, has, has a lot of charm. And West Beach is one of those um, great neighborhoods around town where there's stuff to, there's a lot of stuff to do, places to eat, um, always a great vibe down there. Um, we have Chris Klein from the Canary Hotel, which I watched get built. I actually signed um, the, the topping beam of the Canary uh, with some uh, Mark, they had a media day. This is years ago, obviously. Um, but, but my signature is on the top cross beam of the Canary. So um, we'll never see that because it's in the building. But, um, but I'm excited to hear what they're up to um, these days and, and how they're staying alive during the pandemic. And then Warren Nocon um, from our um, newest, one of the newest properties in town, the Hotel California, a uh, very ambitious and beautiful project that was built um, and really kind of, you know, the waterfront, um, both, the Canary was kind of in a spot on state in Korea, which was kind of a hole in the ground for a long time. And finally the Canary came and kind of finished that part of town. And the waterfront in Santa Barbara was, as many of you remember, um, a big empty hole for a long time. And the uh, Hotel California came in and kind of uh, sealed that all up with a bow and is now a very, you know, cohesive looking part of town um, and a fairly large property too. So we're gonna hear from, you know, kind of a multiple size properties. And um, today I hope we're gonna get a little bit of an introduction to each of these, each of these properties. So we're gonna start with that. Um, and then we're gonna to shift to, you know, what they've been doing during the pandemic to stay afloat and how they're balancing the needs of the tourism industry with, um, with locals as well. So um, Paul, uh, you know, the Eagle Inn, I think is the oldest property here. So why don't you tell us uh, about your um, hotel and, um, and your business and, and what it's like in a, in a normal year um, you know, running that, running that in. Sure. So, uh, the Eagle Inn is, um, two, just two blocks from the beach, uh, right on Mass Street in West Beach. And we're a, a family owned hotel. We have uh, 31 rooms only. And, um, this building was actually built in 1929 and it was originally an apartment building. And, um, my, my family, my parents came over here in 1980 and uh, bought the building and started to transform it into a hotel. And so now we, we have uh, a lot more hotel rooms and we expanded into some buildings um, on Yananali Street also. How, how many rooms is it now? We have 31 altogether now, okay. 31 rooms. And you said your, your parents came over, where were they from? I uh, was from England. Okay, and were they and in hotels before or? They had a hotel in England, uh, a couple, I actually was born in a hotel. Um, and then um, we came to Santa Barbara on vacation a few times and really enjoyed it. Um, in fact, the first time the story is, I was probably about eight and we were driving from LA, supposed to go to San Francisco, but um, stopped in Santa Barbara for lunch. We got off at Cabrillo, drove along, saw all the palm trees, you know, the nice beach. And then we had lunch at what was Sambo's at the time. And we didn't go to San Francisco. We just stayed here. And then, um, in fact, we stayed at the Franciscan Inn, which I'm looking at right now through my window. So uh, we came back a few times, and um, my parents really liked it. We really liked it. And they looked into buying property, and here we are. 
It could have been Mojave. So they looked at a, um, a few hotels all over the state. And at that time, in the late 70s, Mojave was where the space shuttle was going to take off and land. So it could have been a really booming area. But no, we ended up here. So <laughs> <laughs> Mojave is a beautiful area if you like the <laughs> desert. But um, I, I think you wound up in the right spot. So, yeah. <laughs> and was it an apartment complex when your parents took it over? Had, had it been converted already? No, it was still an apartment. And as the tenants moved out, they would update one of the rooms and split them up. And then the next tenant moved out because it was too noisy. So, okay, move out then and um, we can, um, you know, we'll fix it up to what we want. And were there a lot of hotels already in the neighborhood down there? Yeah, this is always, I think this has always been a hotel area. Um, the Franciscan was here. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say this was um, the same number of hotels now. And in a typical year, I'm sure you're, you're packed most of the time. I'm sorry, say that again? In a typical year, you're, you're probably pretty busy most of the year, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, we are. <laughs> Summer, is, of course, is, is the busiest. But recently, um, September and October are also becoming really busy. And now would typically be like where it's a little bit slower, where if you want to do maintenance, you can. But of course, this year, we all want to do maintenance, but we may not be able to afford it. Right. Are your parents still with us? Yes, they uh, live in Goleta, and they, um, they come in from time to time and check up on me, make sure I'm not uh, destroying the place. <laughs> and do you, do you actually live on property or? No, uh, we used to when, I, when we first moved here, but um, now I live uh, just off of Cathedral Oaks. Great. Right about 10 minutes away. Cool. Um, and what's, uh, what's OGBC like right now? Um, <laughs> very, very, very low. Um, I've never, obviously, no one's ever seen it this low before. And it's just, uh, it's a juggling match of whether to keep the doors open and just take one or two people or close them and go on vacation somewhere, which of course you can't go anywhere. So you have to stay home. So yeah. <laughs> right. Like, should I take some vacation time? Well, why? What am I going to do? Exactly. Just keep going. All right. Um, well, I look forward to visiting uh, when we can do that again um, and recommending some folks to go there. Chris, um, tell us about uh, the Canary. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a historic corner of town. Um, was a historic building before you guys um, built your, your property and has really, I think, become quite an urban hub for, you know, people that are lunching. I've been to the, you know, the Finch and Fork a gazillion times, written about it a bunch. Um, it's a great bar there. I actually, I co-founded a music festival years ago and our first um, conferences were actually in your basement. So I know the property quite well. And um, so tell us about, tell us our watchers about, you know, what, what the property is, how long it's been there, how many rooms and, you know, what it's normally like. Yeah, thanks so much, Matt. Um, you know, we're 97 guest rooms and, you mentioned the beautiful Finch and Fork. We've got 80 seats uh, there in the restaurant and bar uh, when we're able to serve, of course. Uh, I think one of the highlights, of course, is our rooftop. Um, we utilize the rooftop um, quite a bit for wedding receptions and weddings when things are normal. Uh, we can accommodate you know, up to about 150 people up there in uh, you know, pre-COVID. Um, so it, it is, it's a, it's a fantastic, corner to be on it's a great part of town you know really kind of bordering the theater district um and as you talk about you know music there's some obviously some music venues within walking distance in normal times and and so i think it's uh it's a vibrant part of town um great you know we we offer as you mentioned you know a great restaurant and bar but let's be honest you know if a guest stays a few days you know they're they're going to venture out and explore the neighborhood uh and dine elsewhere so we think it's a real benefit to have so many fantastic restaurants within walking distance. And, and then, you know, really it's an easy bike ride or, or, or walk down to the beach area, uh, you know, to both the area of, of Paul and Warren's hotels and, and enjoy the beach and, and sailing and all the things that the wharf and that, that area have to offer. So, um, so yeah, you know, we're as excited as anyone to get back to uh, a more normal existence um, and welcome guests back to just enjoy all of the, the fantastic things that, that uh, you know, the Canary is about. And I mean, typically you guys are probably um, pretty full most, most of the year, I'd imagine. I mean, you guys 
we'll host some some business things as well, right? I mean, you'll bolster um, just your normal tourists with um, you know business conferences and things like that, right? We will. We've got eight thousand square feet of meeting space, so uh, that's a it's an important part of our business. And um, while we we tend to think that that's that sector is going to come back probably later in, in in as we move forward and welcome guests back we think it's a segment that'll be kind of later in in arriving again but but we look forward to it because yes it's a it's an important um you know fraction of of our business is just trying to you know build it all on top of each other um i think we're all looking at a reality of uh, a tremendous amount of leisure business now because of the pandemic um, but of course, Santa Barbara is set up pretty well for that. So as opposed to some other cities uh, in California, I think we're well positioned. Right. And how long have you been with the property? Uh, I had the pleasure of arriving about August 1st on a task force assignment. Um, you know, the gentleman named Ben Teeley, he was here in town running the Canary and did a beautiful job doing so. Great, great guy. He'd been with, Canary, uh, with uh, Kimpton for a while is uh, moved on to a property in, in the Northern San Diego area um, with a totally di different company. So I came here on task force uh, from the Kimpton uh, Rowan in Palm Springs, our, our relatively new property there, downtown uh, Palm Springs. And, um, you know, fell in love with Santa Barbara pretty quickly. Uh, it's easy to do. Uh, and was uh, really pleased to earn the position permanently as of November 1st. Great. Well, congratulations. Thank interesting you. time. Interesting time to be starting, but you know, if it's it's all um, downhill from here, I guess. You know, I can't imagine. Yeah, it's just not. Uh, you know, cl clearly, it's not exactly what I expected to be doing. On uh, you know, January twenty first. Um, but uh, but here we are. Right. And what's the status of your of uh, Finch and Fork? Are you guys doing takeout, or what are you guys doing? Yeah, a Finch and Fork is is open for takeout. Uh, open for in room dining. Uh, for our guests, uh, it certainly looks and feels different. Uh, it's just kind of what we call a knock and drop option where, you know, we're literally handing off effectively a, you know, a, a takeout bag to you um, rather than the more traditional, you know, room service that we're all, you know, used to. But, uh, but yeah, we've, we've got um, uh, dining for guests in that way available Wednesday through Sunday. Uh, and then we have a little grab and go breakfast for all of our guests each morning. Um, and we just can't wait to get back to uh, being able to serve uh, drinks and food on the rooftop and, of course, inside the restaurant. Um, and, you know, it's going to be it's going to be fantastic when we're able to do it again. There was a brief period where the rooftop was um, essentially open to the public right when it opened. Um, and it was a great it was a great time. But I think people had too much fun or something because <laughs> they ended up stopping that part of the part of the program. So. You know, and, and uh, we would very much like to, to bring that back. Um, I, I don't know that we're going to be able to bring it back, you know, as an example, on a seven-day-a-week basis. But we think that there's uh, some definite uh, possibility uh, and, and, the right, and the right application of, of welcoming our, uh, the locals back to the rooftop of the Canary. So we're excited to, to kind of flush that out as we reopen and, and find the right combination. But... You know, it's a beautiful place, sunset, um, start combining, you know, our, our food and beverage. And it, it sounds like from the introduction I heard about you, Matt, all of the wines that, that you're aware of in this area. Um, so it lends itself to a really great experience. So uh, we just need to find the right, the right application. But I, I would look forward to being on the rooftop um, as a member of the public, you know, later in, in, in 21. Yeah, it's definitely one of the most beautiful views in town and incredibly unique, too. I can see it being a challenge balancing it with, you know, the needs of your guests who are going to the pool right there. So there's obviously going to be some sort of conflict. I guess you could kind of meter the amount of people that go up there or something. But um, yeah, we'll probably, go back we'll probably have to anyway. You know, again, as we come out of this pandemic, it, it's going to be in stages. So I don't know that it's going to be, a, you know, 200 people on the rooftop anytime soon, but, uh, but yeah, I think there's a way to do it. And, and we're, we're looking forward to the, to the challenge. Great. And occupancy obviously is down, but have you guys had people um, trickling in throughout the pandemic? We have, you know, we're um, like everyone uh, being as, as, as transparent as we, as we can on in the booking process for reservations, certainly on our website, IHG Kimpton and, people understanding that um, 
you know, the, the, the travel order is in place. Uh, that said, our, our focus is really to take care of our guests, you know, um, and so uh, we're trying to focus on the positive things that they can do. Um, there's some great takeout food. Granted, we've all in the last 10 months kind of become reoriented to that and, and more used to it, I suppose. Um, and there's the hiking and heading down to the funk zone. And, uh, you know, are, are those things different than a year ago? Of course they are. But just trying to make the best of it and, um, you know, take great care of our guests in the meantime. Great. Um, Warren Nocon from Hotel California. You guys are the uh, one of the shiny, uh, shiny new toys on the block. I mean, you've, you've been there for a couple of years now, but um, tell us a little bit about the history of the property and uh, how many rooms you guys have and, and what uh, life is like for you in a usual year and, and what life's like uh, these days. Sure. Uh, actually, the, the original hotel uh, on the corner of State and Mason was built in 1925. Uh, those, those who know Santa Barbara history know that two weeks after that, there was a major earthquake. Um, the, the building itself, the, the, the sides fell off and, and it was, it was pretty much demolished. Uh, it took a few years to rebuild it and it flourished through the twenties and thirties and forties. Um, and then went through several different iterations. And at one point there was a, um, there was a, a bar at the bottom of the hotel called um, Rockies or Rocky Galentes, known for its stiff drinks and live music. And, and it was said that back in the day when, when Rockies was, 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 uh, was going, it was, that, that, that was a sign for everybody to come out in downtown and have some fun. It was the heartbeat of downtown, so to speak. Um, you know, we've, we've Actually, tried I caught, to... the, I caught the tail end of Rockies right before it closed. So I, I saw a little bit of that. I went there a few times before before it was over. It's, it's actually where um, the restaurant is now. Um, yeah, Finney's is there now. Finney's, yeah. Anyway, sorry, we, go ahead. You know, f funny enough, we, uh, you know, in the beginning process, we had a ton of people coming to me saying, are you going to reopen Re Rockies? We, we reached out to, to some of the former uh, owners, uh, the former workers there, and really wanted to make it happen. We weren't able to make it happen, but uh, we have our ways to, to honor the history of Rockies. Um, the hotel itself now sits on three separate corners of State and Mason. Um, it consists of this, what we call the State Building, the Mason Building, and the Californian Building. The Californian Building is the original part of the original hotel uh, that we tore down and built up. We kept the facade uh, so that we could build to four stories and have a rooftop. We were very jealous of the Canaries rooftop pool, so we wanted to build our own. Um, <laughs> So, so, you know, ours, ours, ours is a little different, but uh, wanted to keep that fourth story. That's why we kept the facade. Um, that building also houses Finney's uh, in the old location of Rockies. It also has the Jay Wilkes wine tasting room. Then in the Mason building where the main drive is, as well as the main lobby, um, we also have Blackbird, our signature restaurant. Uh, we also have Isla Boutique. Uh, we have some meeting rooms. We also have guest rooms in there. Um, and then the state building is what houses our presidential suite, as well as Goat Tree Restaurant, the Marjoram Wine Tasting Room, uh, Melville Wine Tasting Room, McConnell's Ice Cream, the Visitor's Information Center, uh, Goat Tree, the restaurant I'm sitting in right now. It was, it was too beautiful uh, outside to, to sit inside and do this, so I figured I'd sit under the canopy and, and enjoy this beautiful Santa, Santa Barbara weather. Um, the hotel itself has 121 rooms. We have approximately 20,000 square feet of meeting space. Uh, we do weddings and meetings. Uh, roof we have rooftop event space uh, at the pool as well as above the ballroom. Um, we are a little bit more adult centric being in the funk zone. Uh, we like to say that we embody the funk zone. We are, we are the iconoclast enclave. So this is where you come to resist the status quo. We are a luxury hotel, but we aren't your traditional luxury, so to speak. Uh, we, we do things a little bit differently here. Um, we do have a spa on site called Majorelle, and Majorelle is designed to, uh, to your needs. And we'll do a 10-minute interview before your, your uh, treatment to make sure that we're, we're getting to everything that you need. Um, just like everything else in Santa Barbara, the exterior architecture is Spanish colonial, uh, but it, it's married well with our interiors, which is uh, very Moorish and Moroccan. Um, you know, we also do like to do lots of events here. Um, you'll find out, Chris, when we're going, <laughs> the noise, the noise from your neighbor over here at the Hotel Californian. Uh, we like to have fun. We'll do, you know, in a normal year, we'll do what we call First Fridays during the summer where we do a concert on the lawn. Uh, we do large, you know, other than this year, a large New Year's Eve event where, you know, my very first New Year's in Santa Barbara, um, funny enough, was during the Thomas fires. 
and we had a wedding transplanted from the Biltmore. And I'm in the kitchen working with the chef and the team, making sure everything went well. And I said, hey, I'm going to go across the street to spend New Year's Eve with my family. So I got to go wave through the crowds. And they said, no, you don't. This is Santa Barbara. People don't come here for New Year's. And we wanted to change that. For those that are here, we wanted to have something to do. I know there's some pretty great events and, and great venues here in Santa Barbara, but we just wanted to add to that and give the funk zone its own event. Um, so that's really what it is. I mean, we, we try to attract guests and locals who, who are looking for that unique and memorable experience um, paired with a luxury style of service. And that, that's what we're trying to accomplish down here in Lower State. Great. And how, how's it been going um, during the pandemic? I mean, you guys may able to keep some people in the rooms or? Um, well, we, we initially shut down on March 16th, the day after the very first case of COVID uh, that was presented here in, in Santa Barbara. We shut down uh, some, of the, some of the outlets. Then, then on the 23rd, we shut down everything uh, with the exception of Goat Tree. Um, we reopened again on June 5th. Uh, from June 5th through middle of December, we sold out every weekend. Um, you know, the, the business was there. Goat Tree was, was absolutely just packed uh, at some points on Sunday mornings and Saturday mornings. It was a two hour wait. Then all of a sudden the, the second surge came and it got quiet uh, such, such that we actually ended up suspending operations again. So the hotel itself is closed again right now. Uh, the outlets are, are still open. Marjoram, Jay Wilkes, Melville, McConnell's. Goat Tree is open Wednesday through Sunday. Um, the Visitors Information Center is open, but the hotel itself, the spa, Blackbird, and the boutique are, are, are suspended right now. Um, you know, with, with an operation of this size, it, it costs a lot. And, and the day we ended up having to close, we actually had one guest in the hotel. So it kind of made sense. And we're, and we're looking at things right now. I know that there are, there are uh, some other sister properties in the market that, that have uh, had to make the same unfortunate decision. So hopefully things come back rather quickly for all of us and we can get the energy back down here at, at Hotel California. Right. Well, while we're talking to you, Warren, I mean, this is, I think, kind of a critical question, right? It's like, how do you keep the, I mean, Santa Barbara has a, has a draw to it that we're just, you know, it's a beautiful place. It's, it kind of has this natural draw anyway. Um, but you can't, you know, tourism is like a constant ringing of a bell, right? I mean, you're competing against all of these other places in, in California, nearby, further away in California, and then across, obviously, the country and the world, a little less so right now. But how do you kind of keep ringing the bell for, um, especially when you guys are actually closed, but ringing the bell for keeping Santa Barbara, you know, front of mind for people when it is time to make those travel choices um, during during this time? What have you guys been doing? Uh, we still do a lot of social media. Uh, you know, it, it's one of the things that we're fortunate that this is happening in 2020, 2021, because we have internet, we have social media, we have online services, uh, things that you can still connect with your guests. We send email blasts. Um, back when we first shut down, our director of sales and marketing, our chef and I got together, we said, hey, look, we've got to have something that that is fun that people can follow. So we do a couple things. You know, we, we still do a, a wellness program on Saturday mornings through our spa, even though it's not uh, open. You know, we'll do, we'll do an hour Pilates session or an hour yoga session online that people can just, you know, participate in and, and just uh, log into for free. Um, we also started something called Tuesdays with Travis, our executive chef, Travis Watson, uh, does an Instagram live um, that's become pretty popular. Uh, you know, we get we get a couple thousand views each week. Uh, this week he did uh, chicken stock uh, through Thanksgiving. Each week he was doing menu items that led up. Once you put them all together, you have a full Thanksgiving dinner. Same thing he did for Christmas. Um, my favorite story is uh, he did a chimichurri one week and he and I were walking across the street and somebody recognized him from Tuesdays with Travis and they, they yelled, hey, chimichurri. <laughs> <laughs> And so it, it kind of became his call throughout the hotel. Every time he walked into a room or a meeting, everybody would yell, hey, Jimmy Cherry. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're reaching out to our guests. We're keeping in contact with them. It, it is really hard to figure out when we're going to, to get the place back open and be able to receive guests again. Um, you know, we all have our opinions on how we can do that safely, how we can do that without affecting the local economy and, and, and without uh, affecting the locals. Uh, but the fact of, fact of the matter is right now is, we're, we're not open. We really want to be. And once we do, better believe that we'll, we'll be doing it right. We'll be taking care of everybody, making sure everybody's safe. Right. Is, is there anything in your in the past of your career um, or in any of your training or anything that, that you've been able to rely on as guidance for this? Or this is just something completely, obviously, brand new. But is, it, is there anything you've experienced in the past that was anything like this that, that gave some guidance or not really? Uh, not, not much like... 
there's nothing that's ever happened like this, uh, you know, except for, I guess, 1918, right? Um, but, you know, it, it's funny, Chris talked about coming in and this is all of a sudden his, uh, his baptism by fire in Santa Barbara. The funny thing is when I moved up here, um, they told me it was God's country. They didn't tell me it was act of God's country. Um, you know, I, I came up here and a week before we opened, we had, I don't know, you probably remember the little microburst we had. Yeah. Um, it was, it was basically that was centered. strange. That was scary. I mean, it was almost centered on the hotel and we weren't even open yet. Our, our fences were, uh, sorry for the motorcycle. Uh, you know, the, the fences were blown away. There was a ladder that went through the back of someone's car that said um, the Arlington Theater on it. I don't know if it blew from all the way over there, but it, it you know, um, from there we had the Isla Vista earthquake. Then we had the Thomas fires. Then we had the Montecito debris flow. Then we had the, the you know, economic downturn, you know, tourism downturn of 2018. Um, it's not been fun, but it's been the best place to do it in. Um, so with all that, the team is, you know, the team that works at Hotel California, of which right now 60% are still original employees here after three and a half years. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're well tested, so to speak. Um, you know, there's the team here, we, they know how to adapt. Um, you know, the day, it's funny, the day, the, no, it's not funny, but the day of the mudslide, the, the debris flow, I had just moved out of the hotel and I moved down to Camarillo. Um, and I was getting texts from guest reception saying, there are people arriving covered in mud. What do we do? And I said, you get them in and we worry about it later. And we, we ended up running 80% and we had whole neighborhoods of Montecito guests just living in the hotel for a month and a half, two months. Uh, somebody lived in the, you know, in the suites for, for three months. Um, so while it's unfortunate that we had to go through that, the team itself here knows how to um, be considerate of the guests, know what we're going through, know how to take care of the guests because it's not just a luxury hotel you're staying at. You're dealing with people's lives. And when, you know, when this all started, we all talked about how people that come to check in aren't coming here to just get away, to get away from their city, get away from their home. Some of them are going to have to get away because they, they have the difficulty of having lost a loved one or having just recovered from COVID. Um, so it was a being a little bit more sensitive to what's going on around us and not being um, just a regular hotel asking for your credit card and, and checking you in and giving you a key and dropping you off in your room. It, it, was, it was kind of a little bit more than that at this point. And hopefully that, that stays with us for a while. Uh, because that's that's what it's all about in this industry is taking care of each other. Well, we have to expect it's going to get easier at some point. I would hope so. I hope, hope so. so. <laughs> I really uh, do. <laughs> now um, I have something here real quick. Yeah. Um, Paul, how, how have um, you know smaller hotels uh, like yours um, dealt with this? I mean, has there been any kind of industry guidance or you know best practices or or are you guys just a small business that's kind of has to figure it out as you go. So this neighborhood is all different than Chris and Warren's properties. We're all uh, family owned or small businesses. And uh, many of them have chosen to stay open, it seems, because if I drive by, you know, at night, I'll see, oh, their parking lot's full or they've got six cars, they've got none. So I, I think that um, people are just playing it the way they want to play it. And um, many of us are members of the organization called California Hotel and Lodging Association, who have put out guidelines and, and business plans and uh, checklists on how to prepare your property and keep it as safe as it can be for the people that are coming to stay. So, you know, many, many of the hotels in, in West Beach are still open but just not as busy as they, or maybe not getting the rates that they normally would either. Right, right. And so, um, for us, you know, I, I want to be here for my customers if they're supposed to be here. But the, the main worry that I have is that if I'm bringing in people from LA, which is where most of the customers are coming from or from San Francisco, how is that going to affect my housekeeping staff? because they're the ones that are changing the sheets and washing the towels and having that contact with, you know, someone else's body. And um, I'm most concerned for their safety and health. And that's kind of why I don't really want to be open 
and have chosen, you know, some days we are open when I have a couple of reservations and other times I just won't, won't bother because, you know, the staff that I have have been with me for years and they are close to me. And, you know, if they get ill or, or die, God forbid, it would be, it would be terrible. So is it worth having two or three rooms occupied and putting everyone's health that works for me at risk? And I don't think so. And how have your guests been um, understanding of that or, or would be guests been understanding of that? Yeah, if they, if they send me, you know, a message or an email, they want to, they would like to stay. We send them back the COVID restrictions that Santa Barbara Health Department's put out and there's no housekeeping service while they're here and the restaurants are all doing only takeout or delivery. And I think that deters a lot of people from coming. But those that do end up coming, they are 99.9% .9 safe. You know, they wear their masks, they don't complain, they're, they don't care that they're not gonna get fresh towels twice a day, you know, so they're just glad to be out of their own house or apartment for a change of scenery, I think. And right. Santa Barbara is not a shabby place to come to. I mean, it's gorgeous here. Yeah, I mean, really, if all you did was get some takeout and sit on the beach, you're, you're, you're winning compared to what you were probably doing before. So yeah, yeah. there's that. Um, Chris, uh, the, you know, the Canary's part of Kimpton, which has got to be one of the coolest uh, hotel uh, chains out there. I've stayed at many Kimpton properties all over the place. I live by the, the good land in, um, in, in Goleta. So um, yeah. we used to eat, eat there quite a bit when that was more open. Um, but how has um, the, the company, I mean, it's a very in, individualized um, property by property type management feel, it seems like to me. Um, but how has the company kind of given guidance from, from the top down? Has they, have they just kind of let each property figure it out? Because obviously you're dealing with different regulations in different parts of the country, if not world. And what are you guys learning as, as a larger group about how to, how to deal with this? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, at the core at the beginning, we really relied on CDC guidelines. And I think we've always and, and continued to pay close attention to those guidelines as, as they have evolved. I mean, you're right. Kimpton is a, is a, a grouping of at least aesthetically, a lot of hotels that look and feel very different, cool, and, and, and specific to the market that they're in. But I think behind the scenes, you know, if you will, you know, behind the door, um, you know, we're very consistent and have had great leadership from, from Kimpton executives in San Francisco. And um, that, that, you know, there's a consistent way of, of taking care of guests in this pandemic. And a lot of that has been um, to, you know, to Paul's point, a, a lack of housekeeping service and the communication of that to guests. Um, portions of that as it's evolved have been, you know, using an electrostatic sprayer um, that, you know, helps to, to, uh, to clean the room and, and greatly reduce risk in between stays. Um, you know, it's been the knock and drop version of room service rather than pushing a trolley into, you know, a guest room with all the the, the food on it. Um, so it's been these adaptations, um, you know, temperature checks of employees, conversations with employees as to how they're feeling, you know, quarantining of employees that uh, may have over time had, you know, potential risk outside of the hotel. Um, so I think it's been so many of these different things that really have been explained and have become part of our normal practice from Kimpton. In, you know, in our home office in San Francisco um, that have applied, you know, all pretty consistently throughout um, the markets um, in all of our hotels across the country. Right. Um, and, and in normal times, from what you understand, where does your typical audience come from? Are they coming from mostly LA, San Francisco? Or are you getting a lot of people from around the country, international? What is your typical draw? Well, typically, I think, you know, we're, we're a drive market from L.A., right? I mean, that's, you know, that's predominantly who we are. Um, I think we've seen in the last six months, um, you know, a, a, little, a little more travel from the Bay Area. And I, I know that, that um, you know, again, I'm, I'm kind of catching up to this market, you know, having been here officially since November. But, but I know that the, some resources have been put into, you know, the Bay Area for some marketing, even through Visit Santa Barbara, because we that they were able to determine that there was some greater interest from that, um, that part of the state. We certainly have had those guests with us over time, over the you know, second 
six months of, uh, of, of last year. Uh, but predominantly, yeah, we're, we're, a, we're a drive market. Um, we'd love to see international travel come back. We'd love to see regional travel come back. Um, you know, you may or may not be aware of Southwest Airlines. They're, they, as of April 21st of this year, uh, servicing Santa Barbara. It's, uh, it's exciting news. Um, so, you know, that's going to bring more lift into Santa Barbara and certainly uh, connect to, I think it's up to 50 destinations that, that, um, that Southwest services across the country. So while that's not 70,000 people a day, it's more like 700 people a day. Hey, that, that's tremendous for, for our hotel and restaurant economy here. So that's exciting. And hopefully the timing of that and, and our, you know, our reopening, if you will, as an industry, you know, hopefully that timing is good. Um, we can take advantage of that. So, yeah. And, and so speaking of that, what, what are the tea leaves uh, saying right now? I mean, what do you, what do you think is going to happen? What are, what are, you know, what are Kimpton people saying as far as um, a realistic kind of return? I don't want to say normal, but a return to actually active travel to some extent. Yeah, we've used the terminology of crawl, walk, and run um, for almost a year now, as we kind of forecast. And and so, you know, here at Canary, we're we're back to uh, to crawl. Um, you know, the occupancies are such as that they are because of the stay-at-home order. Um, so, you know, I expect us to be in crawl, really certainly for the next four weeks is my best guess. Um, it could be, it could bleed into a little longer than that. I think it obviously so very dependent upon the ICU bed percentages. And, and of course this region has, has appropriately tried to, to distance itself and literally break away from the entire Southern California region um, where, where I know that there are great people who are still continuing to work on, on, on that and some positive pressure on, on the state, but um, nevertheless, I think we're in that walk phase um, for the next four weeks, it feels to me, maybe six. And then um, it's, it's hard to, to, to predict whether when we come out of it, you know, what level we go to, you know, is it going to come back where we're going to be effectively in red, which we were in what for the first half of November, where we had you know, 25% of, of dining inside available, or is it just outside dining? And, and or is there going to be a, a retooling of those expectations? Um, you know, I heard someone say in a call earlier today, I thought was you know really poignant that, you know, we all know what our capacities are. We all know how many people that can fit on the rooftop of the Canary. And if we were able to just make that decision ourselves with respect to social distancing and respect to the virus itself, um, that, that maybe we don't need color coding, but we need just good decisions you know by sober people who you know are, are making sure that their guests are going to be well taken care of so it'll be interesting to see um you know what happens not just with icu beds and, and getting a hold of this virus and improving where we are but then i think you know politically um what the future four to six weeks bring with um you know the approach of the state um, um and even the county towards uh, the pandemic right right um, Warren, what are your, um, what's your prognostication? What, what are you guys thinking as far as things go? And also tell us, uh, um, you know, where are your typical, are, are you also an LA drive market predominantly? Or are you getting a little bit more um, international in, in, in the usual time? Sounds like you guys maybe never had a usual time given all the disasters <laughs> you had to be there, but. Um, yeah, I, I'd say we definitely don't have a typical year to base anything off of, um, you know, for the, but for the most part, L.A., Orange County, San Diego is going to be, you know, heavily, probably 60 to 70 percent of our business. Uh, we, we, we've also got, you know, the other drive markets, Palm Springs, San Francisco, uh, Kern County, um, you know, the, the direct fly markets, uh, Scottsdale, Denver, Dallas, um, uh, you know, we, really, that's going to be the bulk of it. Um, you know, as, as far as my prognostication of what's going to happen, uh, I would love for things to happen over the next four to six weeks uh, so much. So I think once I think once the travel restriction is lifted, I think you're going to see people re like me, I'm sure uh, everybody else has, has banked their vacation time from 2020 um, and people are going to be dying to use it. Literally, They're, they want to use their vacation time as fast as they can. 
Um, you know, I, I'm one of those guys who I don't, I don't bankroll a whole lot of vacation because I want to take my family somewhere. We work, we work hard. We deserve to play hard. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that's going to happen once all the restrictions are lifted. And, and what better place is, is designed for social distancing than Santa Barbara? Everything out here is open. You know, you know, my hotel itself sits on three blocks. So you go check in and then you walk across the street. So you're outdoors. Um, you know, we have a lot of outdoor spaces. We have the beach. We have the Stearns Wharf. We have downtown Santa, you know, downtown Santa Barbara corridor as it is now, the promenade. Um, you know, if there's, if there's a town that's not LA, that's within driving distance, great for a road trip, it's going to be Santa Barbara. Um, you know, like, like Chris, I also came from Palm Springs before here, but I'd still rather come here. Um, you know, wh whether that's, whether that's in four weeks or six weeks, you know, it's all going to depend on what happens with, with the rollout of the vaccinations. Um, it's a lot, it seems to be a lot going a lot slower from what I understand than, than they would have liked. Uh, but I think, you know, I, I read a very interesting article earlier about did closing outdoor dining cause the surge because people were, you know, I, and it's starting, you know, this, this argument started in San Francisco where they said, you know, people had a place to go where they could, you know, release their frustrations or their, you know, everybody's got the fatigue, but they could at least go out um, and, in places that were safe, that were properly social distanced. Now, when you close the outdoor dining, um, now they're going to do it on their own where it's not controlled. Now I'm not advocating either way, but it's, it's, a, it's a curious argument. It is um, a curious you know, argument. Yeah. You, you know, hotel, like Paul said, you know, we're all members of CH and LA. We all work overtime to ensure that not only our, 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 our talent, but our guests are safe. We want to make sure that there are protocols. We are regulated by the state as well as our own brands, as well as the CH and LA and the AH and LA. Um, you know, so when you take away the venues where people can get out safely, um, it, it, it could, maybe it did, I don't know. Um, but I think, I do know that once we are able to do it, I, I think that hotels will be the best place to go. We were clean to begin with, let's be honest. Hotels, yeah. hotels are very clean industry. Um, restaurants are a very clean industry for the most part. Um, you know, the, you know there, there are those hotels that people are going to say, well, what about this one? Okay, I get it. But for the most part, we have regulations that we have to adhere to. You know, we all have a brand or soft brand that we have to adhere to. Otherwise, we're not going to be successful hotels. Um, you know, we check, we check into a hotel. My wife can find a black eyelash on a black towel. So let me tell you, <laughs> she, she checks into this hotel. She knows it's clean. I know it's clean because she says it's clean, I should say. Um, so, you know, I, I would love for it to happen before spring break. I would really love for it to happen before Valentine's Day. I just think, you know, there's no better town in California built for, for Valentine's Day than Santa Barbara. Um, but it's all going to depend on what happens. You know, we do need to adhere to, to the powers that be, Dr. Ansor, uh, Supervisor Hart, uh, the city council and our mayor of what we should be doing. You know, I, I'm glad I don't have to make those decisions. I can sit back and, and, and Monday morning quarterback it. But by the same token, I'm not on the hook for it. So let's listen to them. Let's do what we can to keep everybody and each other safe. Um, and hopefully I'll get all of our employees and talent back to the hotel here to serve you guys some food and have some music. And are you guys, are you more or less ready? Like if they said tomorrow, you could kind of fire up within a couple of days and, and be rocking. Uh, it, I, I'd have to make a bunch of calls, but we could probably be ready within three to three, three days to seven days. I would bring back the management staff to make sure every, all of the protocols are still in place that we implemented after the first time we suspended operation. Uh, but the first time it took us about two weeks to ramp up. Uh, just because we had to write new protocols, we had to do new trainings. I think this time it's it's re-implementing it, and everybody knows what they have to do. And and I've got people calling me, ready to come back, and I'll just and I have to tell them, hey, look, give me a call again next week, and we'll we'll let, we'll give you another update. The team's ready to come back. They're 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 dying to come back, especially uh, some of our culinary staff. Um, you know, we get we get our our, our pastry chef Ron. We, I think we get the same calls every week. Is Chef Ron back? Is the goat cheesecake back yet? You guys don't make it the same after he left. Uh, so hopefully we get Chef Ron and the rest of the culinary team back as well. Great. Um, Paul, um, what your typical clientele, is it, is it LA-based, uh, California-based, or what is your typical clientele? Yeah, regular year, yeah. Primarily coming from uh, Southern California, but a smattering of, of Northern Cal and the rest of the country. And in the summertime, 
there used to be a lot of uh, European tourists. We get a lot of English people and Germans, but the last couple of years um, that hasn't happened, obviously. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to when people can travel again. I, I think um, Valentine's Day, Warren, that would be fantastic, but I don't think so. I think we're looking at the end of March going into April at the earliest. Um, but you know, when people start phoning and making reservations and inquiring, if we get hundreds and hundreds of those, people are gonna open up. They're not gonna stay closed. So it just depends on the demand. Right. Great. Well, I think we've covered a lot of stuff that I want to talk about. Robin, is there anything more that, that you'd like to touch on in this, in this conversation? Oh, this is really helpful just to get a feel for where people are coming from, the diversity of your, your properties, and just how much you all are supporting our guests um, who are coming to town um, and what you've been doing and navigating through this pandemic. So, yeah, thank you. I think you've um, we also covered got, we a lot got of it. We did get a question just now from oh, great. Um, someone okay. watching from Jean Cedar. She said, um, I'm just going to read it right away, right out. Um, is your staff considered essential in the early lineup for getting vaccinated? So that's just a kind of a general question. Is Where is hospitality, where is hotel in, in the vaccine lineup? Do you guys know? Phase, phase 1B, tier 2. That's, that's, that's um, the state directive. Uh, right now, I think we're still in phase 1A, uh, tier 3. So we, we've, we've probably got about 30 to 45 days before we can start vaccinating the hotel industry. Okay, and then she also asked, would you consider private parties in a private space once you can open again, where invited guests would have been vaccinated and your staff would have been vaccinated? I mean, so if, if would you guys be able to make uh, accommodations for groups of vaccinated people? It's an interesting, it's an interesting, um, it really, Question. it really depends on the yeah. event itself. Um, you know, right now the, the 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 directive and guidelines from the state don't allow for it. Um, depending on what it is, you know, if you if it's a wedding ceremony, absolutely we can do it. Um, if it's a function of the restaurant and, and dining is open and we can fit, you know, the entire group into the restaurant properly and socially distanced, uh, yeah, absolutely would look at it. The best thing to do is uh, is to contact one of the hotels that you're interested in and, and find out what they can do and. Um, you know, there, there are several that have outdoor space, uh, especially in Santa Barbara. If you look at us, you look at the, the Rosewood, you look at the Hilton, um, you know, you, you, look at, you, you look at the Belmont and the Canary. Everybody has outdoor space where we can do private events. I yeah, Matt, there's, uh, there's when... technology out there that I've just initially heard of in the last couple of weeks of a company that uh, once, to Warren's point, once we're able to do this, um, that really kind of works as a, a centralized testing company. So as an example, if you had a group of 50 that wanted to come and stay at one of the hotels in Santa Barbara, once it's legal to do so, uh, this company will facilitate testing prior to travel and testing on site once that group is there, um, as well as employee testing. So I've heard of at least one company that is uh, effectively has this ready to go once uh, markets like ours are, are open to that from a legal standpoint, and able to do it. Um, and we think that that has some potential to help small meetings come back a bit sooner. Uh, for those companies that want to afford that, that uh, application that I just described, right? Um, but it would be that, as you described, you know, testing all the way through from prior to arrival to during um, to ensure that, uh, you know, there, there, there wouldn't be an infection. So it'd be interesting to see how that manifests itself moving forward. I really am interested to see how those types of things, as well as just the technology and the guidelines and how all of those things are going to kind of change what comes out next, because, you know, prior to this, the guidelines were such that, you know, no, there wasn't the vaccine yet. And now, you know, there might be some accommodations based on who's been, you know, gone through that and who can come and, you know, it's going to get interesting, especially for events and, and gatherings, which, you know, is a big part of my life and the, you know, this organization as well. So. Well, especially when you throw in things like HIPAA laws, which, you know, disallow us from finding out who, who's had right. it and who hasn't and, and, and how do you bypass that? Maybe yes. if it's a social event, you can, because it's voluntary, but if right. it's a, if it's a corporate event, 
how does the corporation determine whether or not you've had it because that they're not allowed to know so it, it's it's a good it's, question it's yeah. yeah it's going to be very interesting <laughs> lots of fun stuff to come yes yeah. absolutely speaking of fun stuff to come is this a good time matt to talk about next week's show sure yeah great so um, next week, we're going to be speaking um, about cuisines from many cultures. So we're going to be, um, Matt and I will be um, interviewing Norander um, Josan from APNA, uh, and then Charlotte, um, Charlotte Anderson from Anderson's Danish Bakery, such a yummy place. And then um, Daniel Yoshimi and Jennifer Yanella from Brazil Arts Cafe as they discuss their different restaurants. So join us back here on um, three o'clock. Um, for this next show. Also join us downtown today for the State Street Promenade Market where we're featuring different uh, local retailers. You can shop um, outdoor, outdoors and um, socially distance with these local vendors. So thank you so much, Matt, for um, co-hosting and thank you so much, uh, Warren, uh, Paul and Chris for all you're doing to support our local um, economy and bringing in some amazing guests to support our local businesses. So. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Okay, well, we'll see you soon and cannot wait to travel and cannot wait to come go to your rooftop bars and all of that good stuff that I thoroughly have been missing. So we'll see you guys soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye.